Today we're gonna to go over some different treats that you can feed your chickens as well as some more care tips. We're gonna start off with lentils and I'm gonna show you how to sprout them. So lentils are really healthy both for people and for chickens. They're a great source of protein which really helps them out in the winter time. They're a great source of potassium, iron, B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamins E. And on top of all the health benefits, they're also cheap and really easy to sprout and to feed your chickens. I've heard that lentil sprouts are really good for your immune system, and I heard that they're also good for your brain health, heart health, and reproduction health, which, you know, for chickens laying eggs, that's a very good thing. So basically, the way that you start this off is you just put them in a bowl and fill them up with water and let them soak for about eight hours. So we're not going to do anything else with this until later on. They should be nice and plump by tomorrow. You can give your chickens fresh fruits and vegetables every day. They can have most fruits and vegetables, but just remember if you're giving them something like a plum or a peach, just take out the pit so they don't eat that. If you're giving them apples, take out the apple seeds and don't let them eat those. And just like you would do for yourself, I recommend always washing your produce before you give it to your hens. I grow a lot of different fruits and vegetables. I actually own a produce stand. So for the majority of the year, these guys are getting stuff that's really, really fresh, like picked the same day, grown right in our backyard. <laughs> there goes Mary Gold with hers. But it's still wintertime right now, so obviously I'm not able to grow anything where I live. But it's early March, so before you know it, we'll be growing lots of stuff again. But they love all kinds of different stuff. They like leafy greens, zucchini. They really, really like yellow squash, pumpkin, sweet corn. I don't give them too much sweet corn just because I don't want them to have too much sugar in their diet and get fat. I give them cabbage, berries, all kinds of stuff. Chickens are omnivores, so if there's someone that says that their hens are on an all-vegetarian diet, or if you're in the store and you see that there's eggs that are marketed from hens on an all-vegetarian diet, that's actually not good, so you might want to avoid that. Chickens can eat a lot of different stuff. But some things that you do want to avoid with them, here's the obvious, you don't want to give them anything with like caffeine, high amounts of sugar, you definitely don't want to give them chocolate, same with you know your dogs and your cats. And this one might surprise some people because it's such a healthy food for us, but you cannot give your hens avocados and you can't give them to your dogs or your cats either, so the same rule applies. But most fruits and vegetables, if prepared correctly and if the pits and the seeds are removed, are safe. But if you're ever unsure about something, do your research first or if you know a veterinarian or someone that has owned chickens for a really long time, reach out to them and get some advice before you feed anything that you're not sure about. So as I was just saying, they're omnivores, they're not vegetarians. Protein is a big part of their diet. And if you ever get an egg where, mine look pretty clean today. This one's not even a good example because you could easily just brush that off. But if you ever get an egg that's like really gross looking, then you just, you can't wash it off, then don't waste it because we hate wasting stuff around here. Just go ahead and make them some scrambled eggs out of it and feed it right back to your hen. The extra protein is great for them, especially when they're molting. And the reason I suggest scrambling the egg so that way they don't recognize it because if you just feed them the egg right back to them, they're gonna become egg eaters and that's gonna be a huge problem because then every time they lay an egg, they're gonna to wanna to eat it. So if you do feed eggs back to them, just make sure that it's something that they can't recognize. Some people even say that they feed their hens chicken that they bought from the store. And it's not gonna hurt them. I personally just don't do it because it's just too weird for me, but there's nothing wrong with it. If you do, it's not gonna kill them. And one thing that they really, really love is fresh grass. This used to be grass in here until they ate it all. And like I said in another video, I'm gonna put down a bunch of undyed mulch in here soon to make it look really nice. And it also helps with the odor, which actually the odor is not too much of an issue with these girls, but it'll look a lot nicer with the mulch. So stay tuned for that because in a little bit here, before you know it, I'll be making a video of all the updates and the changes I'm gonna do in here. And one thing I'm excited about is, like I was just saying, since they really love the grass, I'm actually gonna expand their run a little bit because they're gonna get some more room with grass. I planted some grass down in the fall because I knew I was gonna plan on doing this and some of it's coming up, but I'm gonna fence off part of it so that I can like pasture rotate them. And then that way I can let them out into the grass areas some days and then I can also shut the door and block it off so that way we can let the grass recover and grow back. So I'm gonna clean this area out and get started on that. If you free range your birds, then they're most likely gonna be able to find grass anytime they want, just because they'll be out walking around and looking for it. We have so many predators here that I don't do that. I like to keep them fenced in whenever I move them or let them go somewhere so that way they're completely protected. 
but I never keep them locked inside their coop unless it's nighttime and the sun is down and it's dark. That's the only time they're shut in there. The rest of the day, they're able to just walk back and forth all around in this big run, fenced in. And they have free access to the coop, so if they ever want to go in it to go get some food or to lay their eggs, they're more than welcome to. But they spend most of their day out here. And also back here where the perches are. Which, this is also something I'm going to be upgrading. If you are someone with limited space, just be careful not to overcrowd your birds and make sure that you have really good ventilation. Another thing that they love is tomatoes, but if you are going to feed them tomatoes, if you grow them in your own backyard, just be careful not to give them any of the plant from the tomato, like take off the stem. Don't give them any branches, don't give them any leaves, because the leaves and the stem are toxic, even to people. So just be careful with that. Do not give them the whole plant. But it's funny because if I ever pick a tomato that's not good enough to sell, like I said earlier, I don't like anything going to waste, so I'll toss it in here and it's funny because they all take off running. I feel bad, so then I pick more to bring to them because I want all of them to get some of it. And now we're gonna go up here. Sorry for all the mud, it's been raining like crazy up here and I just recently put this in it's actually a bird feeder but I thought it was really cute and like I've mentioned in some other videos as well I'm planning on doing a huge update in here and just making it look like a, a really nice little cozy area for everyone make it look a little prettier so I got this and I filled it up with I got corn flour oyster shell and grit and a little bit of safflower seeds in here and they love it. It was funny because I thought they were going to be afraid of it because sometimes birds are nervous about new things that you put into their area but they took right to it If you're new to chickens and you're not already aware of this, just make sure that they need grit to help them digest their food. It'll Because they swallow their food whole, so it'll help grind it up and make it easier for them. And grit is basically just like little stones. You can find it at most local feed shops. I talked about this in some other videos, so I'm not going to go too much into this. But I always have layer feed available at all times, just in case they need it. Because birds have a really fast metabolism, so I don't want to just like feed them it here and there or in the morning or in the evening like you would do for like a dog or a cat. I want them to always have access to this if they need it. I've never had an issue with them overeating and becoming overweight. And do your research to see what brand of feed you think is best for you, but I personally really like the Neutrina Nature Wise. I've used this for a couple years now and I've seen huge improvement with it. I briefly went off of this feed and then when I went back on it, the egg production went way back up and this has yucca root in it, which is really nice because it really does help repel the flies in the summertime with the smell of the yucca root and it has essential oils in it and herbs and yeast for extra protein so it's just an all-around really good layer feed it comes in a pelleted form and a crumble form and in here i actually have a little bit of a mix right now because the local feed store that i manage i got a bag of their pelleted feed that had ripped so i went ahead and bought it and took it home and mixed it with the nature wise feed so that's why you see the pellets and the crumbles in here but for the nature wise you can get it in either form I also talked about this one in other videos, so I won't go into too much detail on this one either. But this is just a homemade scratch that I made for mine. You can go to most feed stores and buy scratch already made, but I prefer to make mine just because I add a couple extra things in it. I have oats, barley, and wheat mixed in there. I have safflower seeds, black oil sunflower seeds, whole shell corn, which in the summertime you can definitely cut back on the corn. That's basically just in there as like a good energy source because it's rich in carbohydrates for the winter time. And then I have a mix of mealworms and black soldier fly larvae in here and also some dried shrimp so in case you're wondering yes you can feed your hens shrimp and crabs and stuff like that they love it they go crazy for it it's expensive so it's not something that i recommend doing on a regular basis but this mealworm mix just happened to have dried shrimp in it and then in the summertime when we have crabs here i just give them like the leftover meat that's stuck on the shelves i i don't make any special purchases just to give them that because that would be really expensive but it's good to keep in mind that, like I keep saying, you don't have to let anything go to waste when you have chickens. Black oil, sunflower seeds, and safflower seeds, which are the little white ones, are both good sources of protein and antioxidants. And the natural oils in them make the bird's feathers really shine. And the wheat and the barley and the oats in particular are really good sources of antioxidants, and they're just filled with vitamins and iron, protein. As you can see, black soldier fly larva is one of the favorites of these guys. I've heard that it's higher in calcium and protein than mealworms, so it's a really good option to go with. And they're freeze-dried, so they're really easy to store, really easy to feed.
Peach, you're missing out. Come on. <laughs> Having a varied diet and giving them all these different treats and fresh fruits and vegetables and protein sources is really good for your hens. And if they have a healthy diet and a happy, stress-free life, then their eggs are going to be healthier for you, so it's a win for everyone. And having all of these different foods in their diet helps make their egg yolk really, really vibrant and beautiful looking. And I think the eggs get a better flavor, too. When you give them space to roam around like this, they're going to find buds naturally too, which is really good for them and it keeps them occupied. Don't pick on the silky. Poor mimosa. But anyways, sometimes I come out here after it rains and I'll move their stepping stones or some of their logs out of the way so that they can have access to the earthworms. They get so excited over that. I'll touch on some different breeds since I have so many different ones, just in case you're a new chicken owner or you're considering getting chickens. So this will help put some different breeds into perspective. That one right there is a cream wave bar. She lays a blue egg. This one is a golden cuckoo moran and she lays a really, really beautiful, like dark chocolate looking egg. All the morans are known to lay a dark egg. That's Marigold. She's my lavender Orpington and Orpingtons are really, really sweet. They lay large, like really pale brown, creamish colored eggs. It's a really good breed for beginners and for kids. Here's my Silky. They lay tiny eggs, so they're not good if you're getting them just for the egg factor of it, but they're really, really sweet. They make good pets. They go broody very often. So if you want to hatch some eggs or need some help raising chicks, it's a really good breed to have. This is one of my Easter Eggers, and I do have a video on Easter Eggers, so make sure you check that out. I also have one on different feed options, so make sure you check that out too. And they're fun because they can lay a green egg, a blue egg, or like a pinkish colored egg. And each hen is only going to stick with one color throughout her whole life, but those are the three possibilities that you have if you get an Easter egg. -er. That's a salmon favorol or favorol. I've heard it said two different ways. They're very cold hardy. They're very goofy. They're funny. They're sweet. They lay eggs throughout the winter better than a lot of other breeds. This is Cornflower, my speckled Sussex. She's extremely friendly. I love her to death. She's definitely one of my favorites. That one before Mimosa pecked the camera. That's a barn of Velder. Her name is Shotzi. She's that dark one right there. It's kind of a rare breed, but I am starting to see them a little bit more often than I used to. And they lay a nice dark egg, often with speckles on it. This is Manuka, my black Ostrilorp. And black Ostrilorps are really, really friendly. They're really sweet. They lay a ton of eggs, like a nice large brown egg. And this breed actually holds the world record for laying the most eggs in one year. That brown one right there is Magnolia. She was my first chicken. And she's a well summer. She lays a really pretty, like dark, like terracotta colored egg with darker polka dots on it. It's really pretty. And that one laying down, taking a nap back there is a splash laced red wine dot. Her name is Dove and it's a really nice heritage breed. They're very docile, very friendly, and she lays a lot of large eggs. And here are some different seeds that I got started today because it's pretty nice out considering how bad it was the other day. But I just finished planting those, so in about a week or two we'll start seeing sprouts because I planted a bunch of different stuff. Some stuff's going to sprout faster than others. I did some different vegetables and some flowers because I also sell bouquets. It's the next day. You can let these soak for 8 to 24 hours. Mine went a little bit closer to 24 just because I got busy, but that's completely fine. You can see that it, it absorbed pretty much all of the water that we put in there, and they're a lot softer now. So I'll show you what we're going to do next. I'm going to dump it into here. And now we're just gonna rinse it off and then I'm gonna cover it back up. I'm gonna put a towel over this container, keep it nice and dark, and then we're gonna do this again tomorrow. We're just gonna rinse it off again and then cover it back up until it starts to sprout. Like I said earlier, chickens love plain sunflower seeds, but you can also make them into sprouts. Eva thinks they're for her. So you just need a container and some soil. The container size doesn't matter, just whatever you prefer. And then of course your sunflower seeds. And then you can just sprinkle them in there. Eva supervising. Eva sit, stay, 
And then once you're done planting the seeds, all you do is just mist them so the soil is nice and damp. And then put it somewhere bright and warm and sunny. And then in about a week, they should start to sprout. And then you can give it to them the first day you notice the sprouts, or you can let them get a little bit taller, which is what I'm going to do. And then you can feed it to them. Moment of truth. It's been about three days. You can wait a little bit longer and let them get a little bit more sprouted if you want to. And I actually did leave some inside to let it get more sprouted, but I'm gonna give them these to try for today. Don't forget to subscribe and check back because in the next video I'll show you how it went with the sunflower sprouts once those are ready. And we're going to have some more baby chick videos coming up too. Oh, and I do have one exciting thing to show you real quick, a little sneak peek for one of the future videos coming up.